With less than two weeks before the midterm elections, I caught up with Democratic candidate for South Carolina Secretary of State Melvin Wittenberg. During our conversation, he outlined his top issues and why he's the best candidate for the job. Mr. Wittenberg, how are you doing today? Good, sir. And you? Um, pretty good. Thanks for asking. Um, glad I was able to finally get a chance to sit down with you. We'd like to start off. Would you tell the people who don't know you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm uh, from Columbia, born and raised in uh, this area, graduated from C.A. Johnson High School, went off for advanced my education at East Carolina University, Georgetown University, and the University of Phoenix, spent 20 years in the military, not a typical military career, never worked below core, I only worked at defense level and the Pentagon, and then I also, so I retired from there as the rank of major, and I also retired from Exxon Mobil Corporation. Oh. Uh, thank you for your service, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Want to know what made you decide to get into politics? <laughs> well, I always knew my parents knew that I would come back home and run for office. Those are the only two knew, mm -hmm. but I chose to do this office. I thought the timing was right, so I walked out of my corporate job and say it's time to go back and utilize the experiences and the education I've learned globally and put that in effect in South Carolina and help the people that I grew up with. Okay. For those who don't know exactly what the Secretary of State does, could you tell us a little bit about what the job entails and what skills that you have acquired along the way that will help you effectively do the job? Yeah. That The Secretary of State job oversee a large variety of different uh, administrative functions, such as anybody want to do business in South Carolina corporations, uh, companies, charitable, nonprofits, notaries, cable franchises, they all go through the Secretary of State's office. Secretary of State also has to um, document all swearing ins of boards or people in the positions and they also have to put the official state seal on documents once passed by the legislator and the governor signs them, the Secretary of State puts the official seal on them and make them a law. Okay. Now, the skills that you've acquired in the military and in your corporate experience, how does that qualify you or how do those skills translate to help you effectively do the job? Well, my military skills was basically a business. So, uh, in that job, my uh, skill set was used to interact with oil companies around the world to purchase, procure, and dis buy refined products for the U.S. and Allied forces and agencies such as the Postal Service and the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. But I also was the Army's benchmarking best practice officer, so I worked in strategic planning and I had to find ways to increase productivity, streamline processes, and save taxpayer dollar. And I wrote a lot of, a lot of plans, strategic plans, that looked out into the future. Same thing at um, while in the corporate world, a lot of my stuff was around business, although on that side it was working profit, but it was always business processes, how to be more profitable while increasing productivity, but also streamlining cost savings. So I think in this office, we're the office that manages a budget of about 600000 a year, and in the corporate world, um, I had a portfolio in certain positions that ran up to eight, nine billion billion a day. Okay. Now, you've been out on the campaign trail a while. What are you hearing from the citizens of South Carolina? What What are they in need of? What I hear, I travel 2,500 miles a week, been out here for a year. What I hear from most of the citizens, I do a lot in the African-American communities. But what I hear mostly from our people is politicians come out, get the vote, and never come back. They don't show up to see how they're doing. They don't do anything for them. So nothing changes. So the lot of problems they have is why voters' participation decreased. So they said after President Obama, they came out in droves to vote, but nothing changed. And actually something did change, but our people didn't vote locally or statewide. So we left a uh, administrator in place that didn't make any changes or accept things like um, Obamacare or stuff that comes to the state. So that's what I hear most, and they tell me to keep my promise that I will continuously come back month after month to various counties once in office. Don't be like the rest. Um, everybody's not like that, but there are some. 
who don't go back to where they went into election time. Okay. If you are elected as Secretary of State, um, what are your top three issues from day one that you're going to tackle with that office? Uh, the top three issues I would do in that office, number one, we need broadband accessibility across the state. We're ranked in the bottom ten of internet accessibility, which directly correlates to education because the kids can't get to the internet. It limits their ability to learn. may not be as bad in Richland County, but it's extremely bad in low counties. Um, so I would we reach out to the cable franchises and say, you want to do business in South Carolina? You have to make it equal to all. Secondly, I like to work closely with the Commerce Department. If you want to do business in South Carolina, you're not coming here and just getting everything from us. You're not getting all tax breaks and giving us low wage pages. I want jobs to come in that's going to contribute to our education. You're going to bring a business here. You got to put set aside a certain amount of money in negotiations that you would put directly to our uh, school systems and to our road network infrastructure. Now, I've seen it happen in the business world where I came from. We relocated to a, in one office to another city. We contributed, yeah, we got tax breaks, but we contributed $1.2 billion to the, in taxes, but we had to contribute $66 million directly to the local school system and the road infrastructure. We had to contribute to that. And I don't see that happen. I see businesses come to South Carolina. They promise to bring jobs, but they bring low-wage jobs because the six and seven digit income jobs come with a job. Other thing is we need to have jobs coming that's going to give us more closable to a livable wage of $15, $7.25 an hour. Once you take taxes and deduction, you're making $4 an hour, $32 a day. That's not good for anybody. So those two other things. Another thing that I want to do is reach out and bridge the gap to our millennials, our younger generation, and help them to get into business and not just take an application fee from them, including the veterans also, but to help them train to have a successful business because a non-successful business is not good for South Carolina's revenue. So if we can do that, we can get them in business and also prepare that generation to move forward because by 2020, the baby boomers become the minority. Okay. Um. Another question uh, about the job. If elected, would you be? How would you be able to work? Saying that the re legislatures were controlled, Senate and House of Representatives Republican control. How would you work against party lines? Saying if the House doesn't flip flop during the election, would you be able to work bipartisan? Yeah, yeah that one's funny to me because <laughs> most people think I'm a Republican. <laughs> And I say that, I tell them I speak fluent Republican. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember I grew up in Defense Energy, the Pentagon, and Exxon Mobil Corporation. Mm -hmm. So you would think that I'm Republican for the most part. Um, I have the capability of working both sides of the line. I just know how to uh, do what's right and negotiate. And I have uh, the capability of communicating with people to get them to do the right thing, not a party affiliated. Because in office, it should not be about a party. The only party you should be loyal to is the people of that state, regardless of what their association are. You're there for the people, not for the Democrat or not for the Republican Party. And that's a problem with a lot of people. They are so concerned with the party that they forgot that they are American and concerned with the people. So Okay. Um the election, a little less than two weeks away. The countdown is on. Uh, before I let you go, why would you talk to the voters about why they should vote for you? Here's why I think, here's why I say you should vote for me. Because you've had 16 years, we've had 16 years of the same thing. Nothing has changed. And until we bring in, if you compare the two candidates, I'm overqualified compared to the other person for the job. My background is in business. His background, he's been in the job 16 years. But prior to that, his background was the prison system and then clerk of court. You're going to be in an office to lure business to South Carolina. You need to have someone who has a knowledge of doing business on a global basis that can do business. And um, I think if you look at the two, there's no doubt in your mind of who's the best candidate. In addition, 
we should not allow anybody in this state or any other state to serve in positions of that capacity for unlimited amount of years. There should be a term limit on everything. If the governor can only serve two terms, why do you have an executive that can serve unlimited terms? That's just no good for anybody because the person becomes complacent and reactive and it's not conducive. It doesn't do anything for the benefit of the people. Mr. Wittenberg, once again, I'd like to thank you for your service and thank you for taking time to sit down with us. Um, before I let you go, if somebody wanted to find out more about the campaign or get in touch with you directly, how would they do that? They can reach us at melvinwittenberg.org, which is the website, or dial 803-807-3116. Mr. Rittenberg, thank you, and the best of luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. God bless.